Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be kicking it off with a small introduction to our like getting started with the Pong game uh, that I should have mentioned in the previous video. I believe I kind of skipped over the name and whatnot, but um, the first game that I'm going to be doing a lot more of the intermediate work that we haven't really seen outside of uh, the previous game tutorial that we had, which was like the slides game. Um, one thing we used there was mostly just the scene 2D type GUI stuff, uh, just some simple buttons, moving buttons around, animations, uh, interpolated techniques, uh, the kind of animated interpolation that you see with buttons moving and fade in, fade out effects and all that. Um, so we're going to be kind of moving away from that and getting more involved with actual gameplay, uh, interactive gameplay, instead of just kind of static gameplay, where you're just kind of, you have a puzzle with a defined grid and nothing really has randomness to it other than the puzzle itself. Um, so we'll get that more arcade-like feel to it with start, it's always good to start with these smaller projects like Pong or even some kind of space shooter like Galaga. Um, it's a great way to learn the framework and a great way to learn about game development in general. So this is definitely going to be a lot more fleshed out. I'm going to be showing you guys how to develop the mobile side of it too. So like porting your game to mobile. Um, and hopefully that's interesting for some of you. I, I know a few people have asked me for some iOS stuff. I will say that I have finally gotten my hands on an iOS device. So I will be able to port the project to my iPhone 5 uh, that I recently managed to get. And uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm more uh, capable on the Android side as I do a little bit of freelance Android development, which I do actually want to do some tutorials on that eventually, but that's that's another story. Um, so we'll also get that using that Visor app that I mentioned in my channel update number three. If you haven't watched that, doesn't really matter. All this Visor uh, Chrome app does is it allows me to show you guys what's on my phone. Um, and I, I found it to work pretty well. Uh, it, it actually does a pretty good job at doing a real-time presentation of what's going on on my phone so I can I don't have to use a crappy built-in emulator or anything that runs or typically runs really slow um, but other than that we're also possibly going to be looking into GLSL uh, which is a graphical shader language um, with that we can apply some pretty cool like process uh, visual effects such as like grayscale techniques or even just like if something's moving it'll have um, some kind of like faded blur trail to it or even like applying a Gaussian blur with a with a pause during the pause screen or something like that just just interesting things like that we'll be able to introduce to our game so there's definitely going to be a lot of heavier material towards the end of this project um, but this video is just going to be introducing what we want to start with. Uh, it's just going to be kind of a regular Pong game, nothing too complicated. Might uh, get into some simple AI behavior for like a computer versus, and you know, I might even branch this out to a multiplayer type of game, which would be pretty cool. Um, another thing I'm also going to uh, try to work on is maybe controller support. I don't know if that'd be necessary. I might just end up pushing that off into the Pac-Man game that we're going to be looking at, um, but we'll see. Uh, there will be some more advanced GLSL stuff in there uh, in the Pac-Man game than there will be here because there aren't going to be a lot of on-screen elements to work with. Uh, maybe when a user scores a goal or something, we'll definitely look into particle effects. Um, so yeah, oh, overall, this particular tutorial of videos is going to have a lot of more intermediate parts to it. Um, it's going to start off very basic, but we are going to be working with LibGDX 1.8. Uh, that is the most recent up-to-date LibGDX uh, framework version that's out. 
they added a lot of great uh, viewport management functionality now that they're using uh, LWJGL uh, version 3 in comparison to having used 2.9.3 I believe um, it, it's just a, a better back end for the OpenGL context it works with so with that um, let's just get our project set up so first things first you can go to the libgdx website I'm sure you've all seen this libgdx project set up before possibly even from my previous videos I may have shown it off in the beginning of making the slides game um, I have this folder on my desktop that I made called libgdx projects and uh, in that I'm gonna put our project um, I, I forget if the destination will be created under it or if it's just like an open directory you know I might as well just put this in a top level uh, or a nested one as well so I'll just put it in a, a nested folder inside the libgdx just in case um, and then you want to find your Android SDK which if you don't have that installed you can go to you can really just Google it um, Google Android SDK it should be the first even sponsored link by Google and download that save it somewhere and then just go to where you installed it or unpacked it and then uh, browse and set that directory um, I typically choose to name my main game class application um, that's just a personal preference you can call it like my app um, you can call it pong GDX as like the name of your game um, and then I also make my package which is more or less a, a folder structure it's just how Java works with uh, how it references files and also the package privacy whether certain classes are within a, a certain depth of folder uh, it'll determine the visibility to outer classes that are not in the same nested folder um, but this is just kind of the top level root package um, a dot you can kind of think of a dot here as a slash so that's just something more about Java if, if you didn't know um, package it's always good to have good folder structure to your project it not only helps keeping organized like a good organization but for anyone who might end up jumping onto your project or is even looking at your project it just kind of keeps you sane like you know where things are things actually make sense you have your models you have your views you have your uh, controllers that kind of thing uh, as far as design patterns go which is very important in software development um, maybe not so it's kind of harder to work with design patterns like that with game development um, because they're the ideas around some of the models are a little bit more abstract but um, more or less just try to keep it organized um, and beyond that I'm gonna have some sub projects I'm gonna include all four this time around that's right I'm actually gonna show you guys how to work with like WebGL iOS Android and desktop this is gonna be a simple game so we're gonna be able to get the construction of it put together pretty quickly there's not a lot of involved work going on here um, and then also I just kind of so I don't need bullet we're not doing any 3d work uh, free type we do want free type because that's a uh, bitmap font manager uh, you're able to generate bit, bitmap fonts and kind of modify them different colors and all that it's a really great library extension library to have and I believe they actually updated it in 1.8 so uh, fonts render uh, more effectively and they look better they're sharper cleaner and all that so um, definitely include that tools um, yeah I, I actually not too sure but it looks like the tools include like the particle editor so you can create particles and I think it has a texture packer in there it said yeah um, so that's more so an external set of tools for you to use not necessarily in your project but just so you can um, generate your packed texture atlases and have a uh, real-time particle modifier so you can like look at the particle you're making and then save it and, like export it and so you can import it into your project and then use it and it'll look like what you saw um, that way you get an idea of what you're making box 2d I I may or may not use box 2d this time around um, 
I feel like it might be a little little much for a pawn game, but you know, I who knows? It, maybe we will use it. Box duty lights. Um, I'm also gonna keep that if I do choose to use box duty, because it would be cool to make some fancy effects with our pawn game if if it does come down to that. Um, lighting effects and whatnot. Box duty lights is always great. I I know I enjoy it. Great ray tracing and whatnot. Um, Ashley, I won't be using that in this video, unfortunately. Um, I know there's still people waiting on that from me, but I. I really just want to make sure I hammer out the basics for you guys to start with. And there's just so much with LibGDX that it's really going to take me a while to generate all these videos. But now that I'm back in it, uh, we probably will see that sooner rather than later. AI, I'll I'll keep it in there. I know they do have decision trees um, and the kind of things that like behavioral AI that maybe we'll check out just for the computer pong. Maybe, who knows, this might not be just a straight linear Pong game, there might be some more objectives to it, just so we're not making a one-to-one -one clone, you know. Always got to spice it up a little bit, kind of really flex that brain muscle to get something new and creative. So in the advanced button here, um, I'm going to, I personally am a big fan of IntelliJ. I just updated to the latest. It looks like they changed their icon and everything. A little strange and abstract, but uh, it, it it works. Um, seems like they're rebranding themselves or something. They've gotten a lot of publicity. I know. I, I just really like their IDE. It's, it's slick and it looks great. Um, the market has kind of moved away from Eclipse. So if you're still using Eclipse, there definitely won't be any incompatibilities here. It's just going to be a harder setup. Um, I do know like you have to manually plug in everything. and It doesn't really have... I, I don't think it has built-in Gradle support unless you like install the plugin yourself and then get everything it's just a lot of by hand stuff you have to take care of that i i personally won't be showing you how to do which is a little unfortunate but i do recommend intellij um it's it's a great frame it's a great ide to work in uh so i'm gonna select the idea type project uh because that is the kind of project import that intellij uses um we won't be selecting offline mode yet um, I'm going to generate the project first and import it into IntelliJ. And once we do that and run the project the first time, uh, what it does is Gradle will download all these extension libraries and uh, have everything set up for us the first time. It has to download these extension libraries online. And what Gradle is for is it's a great way to automatically build and uh, download all your external libraries from like maven sources so you don't have to go online download these jar files and like manually import them into your project you just type one line and it'll compile the libraries for you no problem which is really really nice uh, for just jumping in right away it also uh, pulls in the libgdx libraries as well which is what you're using so with that um, once it downloads it you can switch your project to offline mode which is pretty much what this is you notice when I click this oh I guess hmm, I guess it didn't pop up um, you'll notice how it says don't force download dependencies if it starts in offline mode that means it will assume that you have already downloaded the jar file of like uh, libgdx and uh, like free type fonts and the tools and the AI and the box GD lights and you have them compiled and sitting in your project already. Um, that's why we want to download it once and then turn it to offline mode. Uh, the reason it's good to turn it to offline mode is because it will decrease the build time of your project. I've done this and learned about it actually a few months ago. Um, every time you run your project, it will always go and try and like look and download all those dependencies again, and you don't really need that. The libraries don't get updated that much, and you don't change the versions that much of these extension libraries. So that's why we want to set it in offline mode. So we get a faster build, we can debug uh, a little bit faster, and just kind of hop in and out of our game anytime we need to and it'll it'll be a lot more streamlined so now that that's all configured um, just one last time over so you have the name package game class destination where you want the game to go android sdk location pick the project types you want 
you you pretty much always want Android selected uh, because I believe the assets folder is linked in there, uh, which the desktop uses. Um, this I have to say this is going to be the first time that I've ever checked the iOS one, so I'll have to kind of mess around with Robo VM before we really touch up on that. And then uh, select all the extensions you want. These are the ones that I'm probably going to be using. Um, there's third-party extensions. I don't really need any of these. There's some neat stuff, but overall, I, I don't really care about it in this particular project. And then I'm selecting the idea. So um, I should save that. And then with that, all you have to do is click Generate. And I have a more recent Android API than recommended. Um, yeah, I'm just going to click Yes. And dependency free type is not compatible. Oh, that's new. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, I I was not aware of that. Okay. Well, we'll just build it. Oh well. Um, we'll look at the WebGL stuff later. I know there's a lot of little things that you have to take care of by hand. So we'll just find out the workarounds. You know, it'll be a learning experience for both of us. Um, and I'll just show you guys what I figure out. Uh, and that's kind of what I like about these videos is. Not, I'm not the only one learning here, um, but at the same time, you know, you guys get a lot of valuable information from my time that I spend researching this stuff, and I kind of clear that fog for you. Um, so you just have to wait. It's doing its downloads. Um, it takes a little bit, but once it's downloaded all those extension libraries and whatnot, it looks like it's pulling like RoboVM and the LibGDX jars and everything in there, all the tools and Android stuff. Um, so just gotta wait a second. I'll probably skip through this if anything, so. Okay, so it looks like it's done. Um, I believe I will definitely skip over that, so you're probably already ahead of time now that it's all built. It did download a bunch of stuff, and I think that was most of the RoboVM and um, some of the new new stuff, their backend stuff that they're working with. Um, so you'll notice down here, gives you a little bit of info like how to import your projects to your respective IDEs. So there's the Eclipse import and then there's the IntelliJ import. So because we made the IDEA uh, compatible project, all we have to do is go to File, Open, and find our project uh, IPR file. So we can close out of this now, so that's all good. And now we just have to click Import Project, we can go all the way to, uh, let's see, so not there, desktop, uh, libgdx projects, and then here it is. So it's right under that subdirectory. So yeah, it is, it's It's good I made that subdirectory because it looks like it, it uh, added all the uh, core modules that we are, we're gonna be working with right under where I put it. So um, you just select that IPR file, you select okay, and why can't I do that? That's normally what you're supposed to do. Um, maybe I'll try the IML. Hmm. Maybe I just go to open. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's always just been that. Uh, let's see. So Pong GDX, yeah. Okay. So you'll see the Gradle icon now. So yeah, go go to uh, go to open when you're on this welcome to IntelliJ idea, and then uh, just. Select that and it should open it right up. You should have all the modules and everything set up. Let's just expand it real quick. On the left, um, you'll notice we have two things the external libraries, which is, oh wow, yeah, everything that we're working with now. And you can see it's all 1.8, 1.8, 1.8. Uh, everything's up to date and good to go. Um, we can also go under this top directory. You'll notice there's the Android, the core, the desktop, HTML, and iOS. So in each one of these, uh, they all have their source folders, and that's pretty much their launchers. Their application launchers are under each of these folders if you're not familiar with libgdx. That's what allows it, uh, it pretty much, you build everything in Java, and then what libgdx does for you is it kind of compiles it all together and packages it into a format that each of these particular platforms can use and run and it will work just the same across all three for the most part. There's a few little hitches here or there that you have to take care of um, and that's why they give you these open folders like this. 
so you can do those deeper modifications and actually write code in those languages like if you need to write some more stuff in like Swift or Objective C you can take care of that um, or like uh, Android you can write you know in the regular Java and use the Android uh, SDK and do some more work in there to do things that are particular to the native platform uh, which is really nice it gives you that more hands-on feel so um, typically though you're gonna be working in the core the core is what's is what is exported and gets ran by all these application launchers in each of these platform folders um, and you'll notice right here we have under our root directory the application file so now that we have this um, like I said we need to run the project at least just once so uh, you'll see it's the same thing they always have they have their uh, red background with their bad logic texture image and we're gonna go up here and go to edit configurations we're going to go to this little plus here add new configuration we're going to go to application because we are on desktop and that's what we're gonna be using I'm gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call it desktop so it's familiar we can know what it is and uh, just use it from there and then uh, under the main class I'm going to select here and there's this desktop launcher you also notice there's an iOS launcher but I'll get into that later um, we just want to launch it one time so we can get those great old dependencies installed I believe with the launcher it already or with uh, the project creator it already pulled them because it did download all them I have all the external libraries downloaded and everything um, but just to be sure we want to make sure it at least runs um, and then we need to change the working directory this is the thing I was talking about where the assets folder is normally under the Android uh, directory so we go to the pong GDX Android assets and then we just select OK and that's where all our working files and textures and uh, sound files and just anything like that will be placed um, use class class path module of we're going to use core I'm, I'm pretty sure core is the one we want to use um, or maybe I actually I believe it is desktop um, and we, then we want to make sure we're using Java 1.7 so the reason we want to use 1.7 is because in Java 1.8 lambdas were introduced and some other nifty little things which are great and it's about time they're finally in uh, however Android doesn't natively work with 1.8 um, like it as well when you start using that stuff it's incompatible um, so we just want to be safe and use 1.7 granted Android works typically with 1.6 um, however 1.7 is okay to use just so we have a, a few things um, there, there's really no benefit I just use 1.7 um, but yeah you definitely don't want to use 1.8 because there are a lot of things that aren't compatible with Android yet um, so with that I think uh, that should be everything um, let me see uh, yeah so we're just gonna hit a, apply and OK and let's run it real quick see if I actually did that right for you guys um, what we should get is a little window oh Android SDK not specified so I think that's that's a problem we need to go into the modules um, so project structure under file and then you go to your modules and you'll see in Android there's these dependencies um, you need to make sure that the Android API I think hmm, I'll probably use the 21 platform you want to kind of keep that a little low but don't go any lower than I believe like 16 or 17 um, so if you did download the Android platform you might need to get a specific version uh, like use the SDK manager uh, to get the right one but that, that should be all you have to do so make sure you have your Android platform set for the Android module um, and I think that should be the only change and looks like it's still indexing files because I changed the Android module um, and it looks like it has a lot to index too so we'll just wait a little bit for that to do its thing I'll skip ahead for you guys okay so 
that's all done indexing and everything. That took a little bit longer than I expected it to for some reason. Um, I know it's probably just like pre-dexing all the files and uh, getting everything set up. Um, but it does, I, I took a second and kind of checked it out and it does look like we do have all the libraries anyway. So what I'm gonna suggest is go into uh, your preferences for IntelliJ overall, like the settings of IntelliJ. Go to build execution and deployment. Go under build tools, go to Gradle, uh, you can select Gradle. You'll notice there's this offline work button. So yeah, we just want to check that back on and uh, hit OK. So we should be good to go now. It won't make uh, Maven go check out the dependencies that we have for all these external libraries to see if they're up to date or not and match our uh, build.gradle file. And you see how here we have all these dependencies for each project. So there's the iOS project, there's the core project, there's the HTML project, which is a WebGL. Android project and these these are all just the the libraries so you'll see like there's GDX controllers free type uh, box 2d and the actual libgdx platform and so that that's just like making sure everything's specified everything's good and running right as it should um, it's kind of what gradle does this is uh, using it's pretty much like a gradle script so to speak so with that, uh, let's run our project one more time. Everything should work smoothly. We should be good to go. And all we have to do is hit play. And it'll just make it real quick. And there we go. And we got our window. We have our application. Um, we can resize it. It does its automatic resizing and everything. Um, and it's pretty slick. So we can close it. Uh, should be good to go. Uh, one thing I have heard, I, I'm not too sure. I, I know there's a curtain current bug in 1.8 where if you um, it, this is I believe Mac OS X, like specifically Max if you like hide the window um, the process doesn't there's like something about the process will start eating through your CPU um, like has some rendering issue uh, where it doesn't like sleep it or anything so we're just gonna uh, not really care about that but just something to keep in mind for the current version of libgdx even though it is up to date, it's stable and everything, there are a few hitches. They're still working out the bugs. But overall, it's a good direction to move because LWJGL3 is where we want to be. So um, with that, I think I'm going to leave you guys here. I know that wasn't a lot of new material, but more so for people who are wanting to get the project set up with the latest of the latest. They know how to go through the steps, what to look for, some little tips and tricks here or there to make sure you're not doing more work than you should on your machine. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video where we actually start getting our basic structure put together. And see you next time.